Isn't it remarkable how baseball works? Just a few days ago, we were talking about how the Rockies were on the verge of beating the Blue Jays in a series at Rogers Center. After losing 12-4 to the Rockies, everybody's miserable. Gosman's horrific. The offense still blows. I'll be at the latter part still is kind of a thing. You now win three straight, and you're nine and eight on the season. And Chris Bassett, man, oh man, after his first after his last performance where he was sparkling, I believe against that uh, that was against Seattle, wasn't it? Uh, that was against the Seattle Mariners. He goes out there tonight with a full on alpha dog performance for for Chris Bassett. He was brilliant today, wasn't he? Six and a third, four hits, one run, five Ks, walked two, and made in-game adjustments to throw off the Yankees hitters as you beat the Yankees 3-1 today. And as I mentioned, win three straight and are 9-8 and eight now on the season. Just like that, the Blue Jays need one more win in this series. And then you look at the season series against the Yankees, and it's 3-3. At the very least... You're not in bad shape if you're the Toronto Blue Jays right now. The offense still kind of blows. Only four hits today. They had plenty of opportunities, especially in the early goings against uh, against Luis Heal. And they couldn't come through for the most part, but it is what it is. Let's talk about it. Top of the second inning, Oswaldo Cabrera hits an RBI single, scoring Glaber Torres to make it a 1-0 Yankees lead. And that was on Bassett's sinker. It wasn't really working too well. So what does he do? The guy with eight different pitches is like, Fair enough. I'm going to start you off with a breaking ball. I'm going to start you off with one of my change-ups. One of slider. All this stuff. But then I'm going to finish off with a sinker. It's like, oh! Because what, what did he strike out Aaron Judge with 94 mile an hour right down the middle late in the game? The sinker! He adjusted mid-game. It was outstanding from Chris Bassett. Then in the bottom half of the second inning, after Bobachek gets picked off in the first inning, and that is with, what is it? What was it? First and third? Second and third? Whatever the hell it was. It just can't happen. Your offense already ain't great. And you have an opportunity. You have two on and nobody out. Bow gets on. Fielder's choice. Runners in the corners. You get thrown out. It's not good. Can't happen. But in the bottom half of the second, thank God, Luis Hill can't throw a strike. Kevin Biggio, it's an RBI double. And for the love of God, Kevin Biggio has perfected the, I'm going to take a fastball right down the middle with two strikes. How many times is that going to happen to this guy? It's crazy. But he hits, an, he hits a leadoff double to start the bottom half of the second inning. Alejandro Kirk walks, stays red hot. Then Dalton Varsho walks. You get the bases loaded now with nobody out for Isaiah Connor Falefa. And he draws a walk. So Luis Hill can't find the zone to save his flipping life. You've walked in a run. It's a tie game. The bases lo- are still loaded with nobody out. And Kevin Kiermeyer. We, we all got to have a hard conversation with this guy. I, I truly believe this might be the end of KK. I hope I'm wrong because of the vibes and the defense he brings and all that. But offensively, he ain't giving you much. He's getting beaten by fastballs left and right. And on this specific plate appearance, Luis Heal can't find the damn zone. He has walked three straight guys. He cannot throw strikes. He's walked four in the first inning and it what? Inning plus batters. And KK goes up there and swings at the first pitch up at his face. Like, like, what's the approach? You gotta be waiting back. Let him come to you. Maybe even twice since you're the number nine hitter. But no, KK strikes out. Strings at all three pitches. Not even strikes. It's an awful at bat for Kevin Kiermeyer, And he goes down without a fight. And there's one away. Then Kirky comes up, and then Luis Hill, once again, can't throw the strikes, can't throw strikes, and there's a wild pitch, and in comes Alejandro Kirk, speed demon from three bag, coming home to score, giving the Blue Jays the lead, it's 2-1. But then Vladdy comes up, and he did the first pitch, he, uh, by the way, I think that was, wasn't that a George walk? And he grounded out to short, right, after the wild pitch. And then there's two out. You have an opportunity here. And Vladdy first pitch grounded to third. It's like, okay. Actually, on that play, on that George Springer ground out, it's a chopper to third, and Varsho's got to go home there. He absolutely has to. He, I think he knew it right as he didn't go and then got back to third base. He knew he screwed up there. But against the Yankees, it didn't, it didn't bite you in the ass today. But those type of things, extra 90 feet, extra runs, 
They can come back and haunt you. And then Vladdy first pitch ground out of third. I was like, okay, well, Vladdy again, no clutch, no clutch since is in his body right now. It's it's incredible. Sure, exit velocity, all that stuff. It's into the ground. Doesn't mean a damn thing if the exit velo is right into the dirt. But you do have the lead. It's now two one Blue Jays, but you, the base is loaded and nobody out, and you really couldn't do squat with it. You got to make them pay, especially against a good team like the Yankees. But then Chris Bassett. Just settles everything down. And in the bottom of the third inning, an infield hit from Bo Bichette. Then, I believe it was a stolen base from Bo Bichette. Kirky then comes up and drills one down the, down the third baseline. Stays fair. Goes into the corner. Kirky's got his first extra base hit of the season. Thank God for that. And it's an RBI double. As B, as Bichette comes in to score, Kirky stays hot. And he's the Blue Jays now lead it 3-1. Yeah, that's all she wrote. So let's head to the player stats offensively. Well, your top of the lineup didn't give any hits. If you combined all the hits they got, uh, they were, what is that? Uh, four, what is that? Two, four, is it, is it eight, and then 11? Is it 0 for 11? I'm sorry, 1 for 11. And Bo's hit, in and field single. It's not good enough. And yes, walk twice for George. Vladdy, two walks. You know, uh, Turner had a walk. Sure. You're the top four in the order. You got to do damage. And your damage today was done by Kirk. You had four hits today. Four. Kirk, you had two of them. Bijo had the double and then both an infield single. Thank God you make them all. You made them all worth it. That always worked that way. You don't always score three runs on four hits and do not hit a home run. Kirky two for three in the game of the run scored an RBI and walked once. Getting his numbers back up. He's now hitting 200 on the year with an OBP of 293. The OPS is going to start climbing for him. It was 429 going into the game today. It'll probably be around 500 today after today, which is great for him. Um, but in the end, the offense still blows, right? Four hits, eight strikeouts, eight walks, which is nice. But you can't expect guys to walk you all the time. You got to put back the ball and do some damage. But this team, I don't know if they can do that. Chris Bassett, as we mentioned, the hound on the mound was brilliant. Six and a third, four hits, one run, five Ks and walk two. He was awesome. Ira has now dropped to 403 after his miserable two starts to the season. That's a funny thing. For people who are worrying about Bassett after those first two starts, did you not watch last year? I mean, his first two starts were putrid. Especially his first one against the St. Louis Cardinals where he was absolutely torched. Yeah, I got no problem with Chris Bassett. He was great yet again today. And the bullpen came out there. Tim Mesa starting to find a little bit more. He went two-thirds of an inning. No base runners reached. Chad Green and Jimmy Garcia continue to be electric. Chad Green, clean inning of work and a strikeout. Jimmy Garcia, clean inning. No base runners. Awesome job by him. Picks of the save. His second on the season. And nothing but good vibes leaving Rogers Center tonight. And also, Danny Jansen might be back in the lineup tonight. For the love of God, they need some sort of punch. So that'll be good to see. Hopefully he gets in the lineup today, whether it's, tomorrow, whether it's DHing or whether he'll, be, whether he'll be behind the plate. I think um, my guess is this. They have Kirk in the lineup because he's hot, or if you're John Schneider and you, for some reason, don't want to play him, it's sure, which would not make much sense to me. With the day, day, day game coming the next day, you'd want Danny to DH tomorrow, Kirk be behind the plate, or vice versa. You go Danny behind the plate tomorrow, Kirk DH, and then flip them for the next day. It makes sense, doesn't it? We shall see. We shall see. But also Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson are close to returning. Swanson could be back tomorrow. Romano hadn't pitched as much as uh, Swanson did. So we'll see what they decide to do in that sense. They might just bring back bring back Swanson, send Mitch White packing, make that an easy move. And then he's still got to think about how the hell to get Romano on the roster without sending Nate Pearson down. But we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. All right. Tomorrow's matchup is Carlos Rodon. He's having a very good start to his season. He's what? 2 and 0. 1 and 0 with an ERA of 172. How many innings is that though? 15 and 2 thirds, 13 strikeouts, 7 walks. Uh, he's been great. He's allowed only two home runs. He's been really good for the Yankees so far this season. And Yusei Kikuchi, boy, he's been great his last two starts. Uh where is that? Uh yeah, 5 and a third shutout against the Yankees in the Bronx and then 6 innings of one run ball against the Mariners. Both guys are hot. Someone's got to win. We'll find out tomorrow night as the Jays welcome in the Yankees for game two of the three-game set. As the Jays look to win that game and at the very least leave Rogers Center on Wednesday evening with a series win and being 3-3 on the season with the Yankees. 
It'd be a great, great story to leave Roger that way, but we'll see. All right, so you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the game today, because it was a nice dub, hit that like button. I do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not not done so already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game. Would you like, would you not like from today's game for the Toronto Blue Jays? Twitter, Discord, Instagram, and of course, TikTok is down below. So follow up there if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition tomorrow night. Uh, Leafs and Panthers. 7.30 puck drop in Sunrise, Florida. As Matthews looks for 70, or is he not going to play? We'll have to wait and see what Sheldon Keefe has to say about that. And as for the Blue Jays, they're back in action tomorrow night as well. 7.07, first pitch at Rogers Center. Carlos Rodon, Yusei Kikuchi, couple of the southpaws going at it at Rogers Center at 7.07. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the win tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.